my mm -hmm. laptop screen is supporting a plant, so I don't have as much. <laughs> oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. No, that, that looks pretty good. Is don't this, pay your don't pay your power bills because the <laughs> is this for the outtakes real or? <laughs> yeah, Who's our guest this week, Jeannie? Today, we have a returning guest, Pat Knight, to talk about the Lazard study. Hi, Pat. Hey, how's it going? Good. Pumped to talk about this cool chart this week. What's oh, that yeah. graph floating next to your right ear? Oh, this graph? <laughs> um, so this is uh, Lazard's 14th levelized cost of energy analysis. This is a pretty cool data set that comes out once a year at the start of every November, end of every October. And... The reason that I like this data set is because it provides like a really up-to-date overview of the cost of different types of electric generating technologies as they stand today. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of other charts out there that talk about like what the costs of energy were in the past or what they might be in the future. But this is like regarded as the, the most up-to-date data set of you know, what costs are right now for these different technology types. So we've got gas, we've got coal, and we've also got wind and solar. And the thing that I think is probably most interesting about this chart is the comparative costs between wind and solar and the other resources. What are levelized costs? I mean, you got capital and operating and fuel, all these different things. So, so levelized cost is what? That's a great question. So this report is all about levelized costs. It's the levelized cost analysis, LCOE, sometimes they call it. And a levelized cost is a way to compare apples and oranges. So this is a cost that brings together things like how much does it cost to build the resource? How much does it cost to run the resource, both in terms of people you have working at the power plant or the fuel that you need to buy for the resource? It takes into account things like how often the resource runs. So if it's a resource that runs flat out like a nuclear plant all the time, about the same level, or if it's a resource like solar, which operates you know, in the daytime in really certain hours. So it puts all of those costs together and on the same playing field so that you can say, once you've taken into account operating costs and fuel and capital, all that together, what is the full levelized cost for, for this resource? So it's, it's a really good comparative number. So Pat, according to this comprehensive and consistent and up-to-date credible data source, what are the cheapest ways to make electricity? So you know, I think the, the things that I'm really drawn to are just how cheap wind and solar are. So solar is in a couple of different categories. You've got your rooftop residential, your rooftop CNI, but the resources that I'm most interested in are the, are the utility scale ones. So there's crystalline and thin film, and those are the types of facilities you might see that are built in the dozens to 100 megawatt size, so like really big solar farm. And in these cases, these resources range between $29 to $42 per megawatt hour. And, you know, that number might not seem like anything on its own, but I think what's really important is if you compare it to the black or blue bar at the bottom of the chart, which is gas combined cycle, which is often regarded as like the benchmark resource that a lot of Americans currently get their electricity from. And that cost is between $44 and $73 per megawatt hour. Essentially, what this, what this chart is saying is that Solar, within the ranges that Lazard has looked at, solar is always cheaper than gas. Of course, that's not going to be true in reality. You know, every plant's a little bit different, but I think that's a really striking finding. The story for wind is likewise exciting. The cost there range between $26 and $54 per megawatt hour. So even cheaper than solar in some cases, but sometimes blending into the same range as, as your gas costs. So it's, it's, it's pretty incredible. So these uh, clean energy uh, renewable resources are um, beating the fossil fuel resources on a levelized cost basis. Does that account for the, the fact that the fossil fuel resources are uh, emitting greenhouse gases and killing people? Yeah, um, so good point. Uh, no, that's not taken into consideration. So this chart here is the unsubsidized analysis. Lazard has a whole bunch of other different charts that you know explore sensitivities to greenhouse gases. I don't think criteria pollutants is in there, but I might be wrong. But it also looks at subsidies. So it's not just you know the externalities like the impacts of climate change that aren't being included, but also things like production tax credits or RECs 
or other types of payments that go to renewable energy or fossil fuel plants, which also get subsidies in, in lots of places. That's not being taken into consideration here. So this is like just on a, if you want to think about it, like purely market forces kind of kind of chart, absent all those externalities, what are the comparative costs? So if you were to take into account things like climate change or criteria pollutants, I'm sure renewables would look even more favorable. If you were to take into things like RECs and production tax credit and so on, the renewables would also look more favorable. So how might you use this information in your work? That's a great question. I, I can think of two main places. So first is at Synapse, we do lots of long-term electric sector modeling. So that often involves us looking out to 2050 and saying, what do we think the costs are going to be from now until that future year? And going out to 2050 is really important because it helps us think about long-term climate goals. But it's usually important to have a good starting point. So we like this data set because it allows us to you know, ground our starting assumptions and to say, yeah, we have assumptions about what solar might be 20 years from now in terms of costs, but what's the cost today? So I think, I think that's one place. Another situation that it, it can be really useful in is when we are involved in discussions with utilities about their resource plans. So a utility might say, here's the resources that we're thinking about building in our service territory, and here's the different costs that we think they, that, that they might have. And, you know, often, maybe more often than not, sometimes, good frequency, there's you know, not great up-to-date information about renewable costs in those plants. So I think this Lazard study is really important in terms of saying like, yeah, forget about what costs might be 20 years from now. This is what costs are today. And I think that that can make for a really compelling story when you're trying to talk to utilities and make sure that they're making the right decisions in terms of prudent investments in energy technologies. How does the cost of energy efficiency compare to all this? My understanding is, based on recent research from LBNL and some other sources, cost of energy efficiency is about $20 to $30 per megawatt hour. So probably about in the same range as solar is. Maybe a little bit lower than solar, depending on where you are. Maybe a little bit higher than solar, depending on where you are, but right about in that range. You've been telling us a lot about um, the costs of utility-scaled resources. What does this mean for like a, a regular person who's not a utility? I mean, it doesn't mean that, you know, when you're building a gas plant in your backyard, you're going to decide all of a sudden to go out and build a solar plant instead. I think what it means is it's more about making sure that the utility that you're paying your electricity bill to is, is making the right decisions. So if you're in a, in a part of the country that has a vertically integrated utility, that means that your utility that bills you is also the one that owns all of its power plants. And if it's making bad investments, if it's spending money on power plants like gas or, or, or coal, for example, that are more expensive than other newly competitive technologies, that's a bad move. And that means that you're going to be paying more for your electricity bill. So I think that that's the main takeaway for most people is to look at this chart and think to themselves, what sort of power plants is my utility building and are they the cheapest? Hey, thanks, Pat. Happy to be here and uh, hope I'm back soon. Thanks. Bye. Thanks for watching. This is Energy Nerd Show and Tell. It's the show that we want to watch. So we're thinking maybe some of you energy nerds want to watch it too. Um, if you do, then uh, hey, uh, tell your friends and subscribe right around here. Click there. And check. Or there. Or, or over here. Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and YouTube and wherever. Yeah, and the Energy Nerd website at energynerdshow.com. You can always go there. And if you want to be a guest, you can uh, volunteer to be a guest. We, we love to have guests. In fact, that's kind of what the show is all about. Absolutely.